Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It feels like you're talking to the mic, not me. I am talking but to the mic. <laughs> 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 I'm talking to Mr. Mike, and he's here to, he wants to say some shit. Yeah, Mr. Mike is not here. There's no Mr. or Mrs. anyone here. It's just us. And that's true. We're by ourselves. Yeah, we said we'd do every 10th episode because we enjoyed so the 10th one, and now we're at 20. Yay! That's 20. Like, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Do we got more listeners than last time? Than 10? Did you say we have more listeners than 10? Yeah, definitely. It's always growing, though, I'd say. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank this you. This is Voice of Vancouver, by the way. Yeah. I'm Jordan. Probably figured that out. I'm Jordan Marywich. And I'm Cam Burroughs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cam Walter Burroughs. Or eventually, Walter, no. Damn it. <laughs> I'm Cam Whitby Burroughs. <laughs> Initials, right? I'm Cam William Burroughs. No. Fuck. What the fuck? Dude, we're going to get, we only have an hour left. I'm Cam <laughs> Wonderbread Burroughs. <laughs> Very close. Wondro. Wondro. Bread. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I'll tell you if you can remember what my dad nicknamed or my dad named me as a baby. You should Bud. get this one. Yeah, that one's easy. Wesley. Cam Wesley Burroughs. <laughs> oh, he got it. How did Bud trigger that? Dude, Bud triggered it. I just remember you telling me that story and then like remember. I don't know how that fucking correlates at all. But <laughs> Imagine that I kept the same middle name, but it was like Bud Wesley Burroughs. It doesn't really go together, does it? No. No, no. Bud Wesley? Wesley Cam Bud. Cameron Wesley Burroughs. It's a good fucking... Strand of weed right there, Wesley Bud. I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's <laughs> <laughs> Well, it could be. Yeah, true. Sick. We're here. Mm -hmm. We almost brought in a stranger. Mm -hmm. So close, but he got away from us. We started talking to him outside while I was smoking weed. And fuck, man. He loved the smell of weed. He just was like, hey, can I, can I, can I just, can your smoke's blowing over here? And I was like, oh, shit, dude. I can move. And then he's like, no, no. I kind of like it. <laughs> and then I asked him if he wanted to smoke weed, but. He said he wasn't doing that right now, and then we started talking, and we thought, hey, man, maybe this guy can you, come you, on the cast. You guys shared a love of the Blue Door, where yeah, we both yeah, bought we weed. Yeah, we both bought weed at the Blue Door at one point in time, which is pretty, it was a pinnacle. You guys have so much in common. Yeah, we could have had him. I don't even know his name. Did you get his name? No, I didn't ask his name either. Let's call him Charlie. He, he definitely like heard our whole conversation about sex for, for about sure. 25 minutes. Just. Yeah, we were talking about sex, and... And like he was definitely like he probably wanted to talk about sex. I think he did. Yeah, I think he, yeah, yeah. He really did because he really didn't have much to say when I was like, "Well, I can fucking move." <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I he, just wanted to be weird. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, "All right, well." Yeah, he was like, "Hey, your smoke's blowing over here." Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I like it, but some people are weird and yeah. mean like that. Yeah, that's what he said. He's like, <laughs> "Yeah, but some people don't like it." I'm like, "Well, yeah, that's why I thought you." That's what I thought you were getting at. That's why you were so believable. <laughs> That's why you were so believable. Tricked me. Yeah, got me. Got him. Um, just for my sake, since there's no, yeah, talk to me. there's no intro, and Tell there's no, there's no difference between yeah, the intro well, well, and yeah, the podcast. Why would we intro when we don't have? So how about we just go? Boom! Here's your music. Sick. Now we're back. Nice, dude. Thanks for waiting. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, you like didn't actually you ripped. didn't actually hear it. They heard it though. What? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I heard it. <laughs> Seemed Did faster. You know? <laughs> Seemed faster. <laughs> Seemed really fast. No, I'm just kidding. I'm mixing a salad. Well, it's a couscous salad. It's it's something. It's couscous and like pesto or like or cilantro or something. I, and like oil. I forget what that's called. That's called something like um, Martin makes it all the time, but I don't know what it's called. I'm going to eat it now because it's fucking dinner time and you I'm keep, hungry as shit. I'm not going to eat in the mic, though. Let's you keep it. talking and I'll Google the name of this. All right. Who's going to Google the name? I just took a fucking big bite. It's delicious. What is it? Couscous. What is that? What's it called, man? Couscous with summer pesto? That means shit. That means nothing. One third cups pesto. Vegetables, foodies. <laughs> Cameron, what do you think it is? Does anybody? I have no idea. Does anybody know? Anybody out there? 
Someone's got to know. Yeah. Maybe Martin just named it, and then you're just going off that. Yeah, that's true. Maybe Martin did just. <coughs> Anyways, it's fucking delicious. <coughs> and, um, yeah, like, um, if you want me to talk about my day, it was weeks. Because we did gyms on the Sunday. So it's been Jesus. almost two weeks. That's a long time ago. Yeah, shit has happened since then, for sure. I don't know if it has. I pretty much worked my entire... I pretty much worked the entire time. Well, it's just happened for me, I guess, then. Yeah. Um. Actually, I guess, no. There was a lot of skating. Not much going on right now, actually. Just skating, working. Fall is beautiful here, you know? Anyway. Fall is fucking great. Fall is, like, full-time swing, beautiful golden hour, around 6.37. Um, yeah. I've been skating a lot, obviously. I mean, y'all know that. But, um, fuck, man. I don't really got much. I I was like, I'm blanking here. <laughs> you skated. I skated. That's Sick. it. I ate healthy. I worked out. I stretched a lot. It's October. It's October and it's going. Actually we didn't fill out our calendar this, this week, but we both we've all been doing our challenges, but I know like I for myself have been uh, not doing some of them for sure. So. But like there's nothing written down, so no eggs are consumed. That's that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you should go home and write them down. You did this for a reason, you know? You wanted to do those right. things that you are I doing. want to do those things, but I feel like I've already created some good habits, but I need to keep on those habits. So I think you're absolutely right. I had some raccoons fuck with me in Georgia in the middle of the night. When? I forget. It was this weekend, Friday, Saturday. I got home after Foos. Took Georgia out, and she knows immediately. But normally she's afraid of the dark anyway, so she's always like on edge at night when she goes outside. So... It, I didn't notice that she was like getting built up to be very fired up. Mm. Like there's like an intro phase. And then as I walked around the corner, all of a sudden just my whole arm extended. She just full tilt run towards the raccoons. Oh, shit. And then I realized it was raccoons afterwards, obviously, because they were kind of around the corner by the stairs from my front of mm-hmm. the front of my house for those that know. And for Jordan, they were fucking with them. And, I immediately like just pull her up the stairs and go in the main door below where I used to live. And these raccoons start running at us. And I'm like, dude, like I'm on your team. Seriously, I do not want like this. George is going to fuck you yeah. up. I'm on your team until the second you touch Georgia. Mm-hmm. Then I'm on her team. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want this fight to happen, but I'll kick a raccoon. I'll do it. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I'll kick a coon I'll kick any anything day. Anything that's coming at me. Anything I'll, that's coming at me. I'll be like, I will boot you. I don't like. It's sad, but it's true. I even had I looked this up because I was just curious. If I'm at the dog park, mm. and there's a dog that just starts fucking destroying Georgia, mm-hmm. am I allowed to step in, or is that animal cruelty? And I, uh, you are allowed to kick a dog that is fighting your dog. No shit. It's personal, technically personal property and like self protection. That's so funny. But I never knew, and I thought that'd be a good thing to know because I care more about my dog. No, I don't want that food that you don't know the name of. Thank you, though. It's delicious, though. I just ate food outside. That's fine, yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) (laughs) A little insecure. It's all right. (laughs) Cooking's not a strong point, all right? No. Throw some spinach in there. How about some sprouts on top? Nailed it. Look how fucking golden that (laughs) is. That's fucking sick as shit. Yeah, that's hummus. I'm scared. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. How'd you make the hummus? A blender. (laughs) And chickpeas. Bullshit. So true. <laughs> you bought roasted garlic hummus in a container. Mm-mm, that's not roasted garlic. That's black bean hummus. Black Ooh. bean and cilantro. Have you had beet hummus? Mm-hmm. Dude, yep. I'm so down for beet hummus. And dude, just to let you know, I've totally made hummus though. It's pretty easy. It's tahini, chickpeas, and oil, and salt, and sometimes lemon. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm mm-hmm. saying you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. That was Can right. Have? Yeah. No. <laughs> he's got spinach <laughs> hanging out of his mouth as he's trying to tell me this. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll continue to talk because he definitely put way too much food in his mouth. That's why we need a camera, though. Now he's pouting with his arms crossed. Pull that toque over your eyes. There you go. Just me. All right, guys. Um, raccoons it's suck. It's just us. Is it? I like it. Well, this is pretty much how the intro always is. So. I guess that's true. Yeah. Okay, it's know. not does that it, weird. It doesn't feel that weird. <laughs> it does feel weird to be feels- back in the library, though. Even though Jim's was here, mm-hmm. it was two weeks ago, and we actually yeah. delayed the release. Mm-hmm, so it had been two weeks. I don't know. We did one on Thursday and then one on maybe. 
uh, Sunday, right? That's when we recorded. Yeah, we did one. Sunday. Anyways, I did have something that happened to me. I just remembered. Nothing yeah. happened to me really, but I I had my first fall beach fire because the fire bounce gone. So, and you know what? Beach fires are fucking beautiful. And I'm not gonna say where because I don't want to blow the spot. But yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, there was a girl that I used to date. You know her uh, on her Instagram. She like had a little Insta story like, oh, secret spot. I love it. And immediately, like, I know exactly where that is. And she's like, don't tell anybody because there's no one ever here. Mm-hmm. I was like, and you know what? It's the best. I ain't going to do it. I ain't yeah. going to tell y'all because it's, 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 it's great. Yeah. I wouldn't. And plus, you don't want to drive all the way to Coquitlam, do you? No, I don't want to drive to Coquitlam. Uh, <sighs> you can't see the winks. But we were winking at you guys. <laughs> Actually, Cam was winking at me. <laughs> I was. I was, yeah. Man. You told me that something. Oh, the beach fire. Right, beach fire. right, right. How was yeah. it? Who'd Man, you go it was with? Epic. Uh, I went with Jack. I went with Noemi. I went with um, Reed and Irina and Carter. It was sweet. Nice. You met Irina? Yep, twice. She's awesome. Man. She seems really She's cool. She's so nice. Yeah. yeah. I was so stoked for Reed. I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She seems cool. That's sweet. Yeah. Super sweet. Yeah. We had Thanksgiving. Ooh, um, Canadian Thanksgiving. That's I would great. guess most of our listeners are Canadian. Maybe Kimberly, the girl that I met in Colpad, she might listen. I gave her a gift down there that I didn't I would want to hope bring back. That some Americans listen. Somebody from America's got to listen. From US. Send us a postcard if you do. <laughs> I never, we never got mail. We've never got mail. No, we also don't have a mailbox that they know about. Send me some mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love a postcard. I love a fucking yeah, postcard. I love a fucking hard copy piece of mail right now. Just so I could read it to you guys. Yeah, yeah we'll take fan mail. Um, Anthrax news coming up every week. Mm-hmm. We'll open up anything. Send it to us. Mm-hmm. Open it up on air. So good. I'll do it. I literally will do this. He looks serious. I'm serious. That's a cool idea. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what we get. <laughs> Plus then I could open hard copy mail. That's exciting. Hard copy mail that isn't ICBC being like, oh, what's up? You have your insurance needs to be renewed and you owe us like 280 bucks in two days. You're like, oh, for fuck's sakes. Yeah. Or, yo, what's up? It's Revenue Service Canada. Looking for that MSP. <laughs> or, 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 or Visa being like, yo, what's up? You broke. <laughs> <laughs> I sense a, a pattern here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Imagine, do you think it makes it better if you sent a dick pic via mail and a hard copy, like a Polaroid? Is that a better dick pic than That's an iPhone? That's exciting. You're like, yo, what the fuck? No. I don't know. I don't know what it's like to get a dick pic. I, don't, I know what it's like to send one because I sent one to, um, who do we send one to at Cole Stocker? Dale and Cole and Dale Austin. Dale and Cole and Austin at Cole Stocker. I talked about that. With a girl the other day. I don't know what those girls were thinking that they could get more dick pics on command than a guy could. No way. The girl was like, No if fucking way. I challenge you well, right not now. With our friends, not with doesn't friends. even matter. Doesn't matter. Any friends, man. Any group of friends that are 25, 30 years old, you could, even younger than that, you could get more dicks as a guy. Just like if I were to challenge a girl to get more photos of tits right now, she would win. I guess that's true. You could just text your friend and be like, Yo, I know this is a stupid idea, but show me your tits. <laughs> yeah, oh, I need to win a bet. Show me your, literally what they said. Hey, That's literally what they said to us. Like, like, yo, they didn't even tell us. Like, no, they, didn't, they didn't even say anything. They're like, yo, I know this is weird, but can you send me a picture of your dick? And we immediately were like, yep. Jack was already there, and t- and I was like, well, okay, I gotta do this too. And then I took your phone. Yeah, and Cam took my phone. Took took a dick pic with his with my phone. I think I might still have it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't then, even look at it. Yeah. I was no, like, I know. I just, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, honestly didn't. I, I, just, I, was, I want to go back to Close Talker. But. Yeah. We talked about it on the post. Co- the, wow. The Close Talker episode. Mm-hmm. I took that in the bathroom with a dude next to me taking a piss. That's so funny. He's just yeah. like, who you sent a dick pic? <laughs> yeah. Dicks are not fucking flattering. No one wants to see a fucking flaccid fucking cock, man. Like, I don't no. think so. Like, And that's um, what I was thinking with the girls. If they're getting a dick pic, like, say they... They probably reached out to every guy they've ever hooked up with or have been interested in. The only ones they're getting on command are like preloaded in the dude's phone. And how many dudes do you know? Like I'm sure a lot of dudes have hard dick pictures in their phone. I don't. Do I wouldn't be ready. To like to get yourself like give yourself a boner and then like take a fucking picture of your boner. is, is That's a hilarious concept. That's so yeah. fucking funny. <laughs> that's really funny. Like, you know, just like. 
You just get a boner. You just put it in your hand. You take a picture of your fucking self in a mirror with your boner in your hand. That's, that's fucking hilarious shit. You just take like a, <laughs> a little pointer here. You take like a little travel-sized uh, toothpaste. You put that <laughs> next to it. <laughs> Might not work, Man, but such, she will. I have such huge hands. I'd look like I, I, I look. So, I look fucking tiny as is. You gotta get the angle right. Yeah, you could use like a wide angle lens. You don't want to use a fish because you'll give it away. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> so funny, dude. I like. What did know, our What did I, our parents do? Like buy flowers or something stupid? No. We have to send pictures of our cocks. Man, parents are probably at some point raunchy themselves. Like. I actually no, but not that raunchy because we have cell phones, so like we have that we have the technology to send dick pics. Ten <laughs> years ago, if someone told you, if someone told you while you're on the phone that in ten or the ten years for more than that now, say let's say twenty for the sake of it, uh -huh. twenty years ago, mm -hmm. I actually yeah. literally had like a rotary phone. Mm -hmm. Ninety-eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I had one in my house for a long time, but. Nice. If That's someone cool. told you that you get to watch people fuck on there in 20 years, you'd laugh at them. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and then now enter Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, that's crazy. I also realized something that I did. What's that? I went skydiving with Lynch. Yeah, dude. Fucking right. That was sick. I, yeah. I, and was it good? Yeah. You want to do it again, obviously. Yeah. So I went to Osteo in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like I talked about on yeah, Jim's go, episode. Go to Osteo, go for a jump. Why not? Yeah. Like that's super counteractive productive. <laughs> I didn't even think of it. And as soon as we like, I guess I can backtrack. We were getting ready and I'm not the type to get nervous until like the moment, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't let things build up too much usually. And I was the first so one. goddamn present. <laughs> first one on the plane, last one off the plane. And the view was so nice, dude. Saturday was beautiful. Oh, and yeah. you're up there. You can see Mount Baker. You can see Fraser River coming up through the whole valley. It was actually incredible. You can see downtown from it. It's out in Abbotsford. And it wasn't even nerve-wracking until the first dude jumped because he was by himself. And he was so nervous to go. And, like, he had to open the sliding door. And just watching him look out the plane. I and he's like got I, no like tandem. Thing, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then when he oh, jumped out, he had to do it by himself. It by himself, yeah. Oof. And when he jumped out, the feeling of the plane, like, whew, like the wind after he like jumped, like it was crazy. That you was cool. Scared? That was when it first became real. I would be very, I, honestly, very scared. It sounds like a line, but I honestly wasn't that afraid of it. I and that. that's because, like, I'm good with heights. First also, of all, you bungee jumped before, yeah, and all that kind of shit. So, but you bungee jumped at Whistler, which is that's a gnarly one. Yeah, I sacked myself hard on that because the harness goes right between your legs, and all my weight just seemed to. Land on my nuts, unfortunately. Oof. Not good. I sack myself in weird ways. Mm -hmm. I've sat on my nuts too many times. Like, just sitting down and just like, oh, oh. How low do your nuts hang? <laughs> Apparently too low. Yeah, uh, no uh, kidding. Or to the side. I don't know. Yeah. It's not often, but it Jeez. definitely has happened multiple no times. Oh, fuck. But back to, like, the skydiving. down on your balls. Anyways. Sorry. When that dude, like, this dude straps you on. Like, he, you are latched on there I'm pretty much a backpack on the front my arms just fucking dangle and yeah. whatever he does I Did do he fake hump you no that would be hilarious <laughs> no. there's a really funny stand up bit where a dude's like I don't get skydiving like best case scenario you live <laughs> we were living right before that I gotta pay 300 bucks to still live this dude shows up in fucking spandex and whispers in, his, in my ear with his nice ass breath <laughs> Arch your back, baby. <laughs> 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 I thought of that as I was like basically being ragdolled around by this dude. <laughs> Arch so your this back. Guy like, this guy like he does the walk in or do you walk together? <laughs> we slide to the end of the bench together and then it's like, okay, you look out the window and honestly, it's kind of like skating where you just black out like, oh, well, I'm doing it. You know, like I knew I was doing it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you're with the dude that's taking it. Yeah. So he's, he's doing it. Yeah. So. We're, I'm the last one on the plane still, or now, and everyone else is out, and we're just like, hey, three, two, one, and I'm just like, okay, we're out. Um, feeling of my throat and my neck, like the roller coaster feeling, yeah. was very real for oh, about shit. probably five to ten seconds, and then it kind of like leveled out, but we're still free falling, and like, oh, this is kind of tight, and then boom, he pulled the parachute, and my neck just fucking oh, cranked God. back, snapped back, and I'm like, oh. That probably wasn't good. Well, I feel like you don't have to. There was probably something in the form I didn't read. 
Right. Like, I had to like, expect yeah, that when like I jump out of a plane. Patrons respect when parachute is pulled. Oh, Why the, he gets to pull I'm it. Pull the parachute. I couldn't hear shit. I guess that's true. Yeah. Do you have earplugs in? Nope. You just can't hear shit because it's cold. <laughs> yeah. And my brain's like, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't know what was happening. It happened so quickly, dude. Yeah, I guess that's true. But and then, how long was the fall? Like, how long were you in there for? Like, 45 seconds or a minute or something. That's a pretty decent amount of time. Holy yeah. shit. He let me drive when I got the I got the controls to the parachute. That's fun. Was but I... Fun? Yeah, yeah. It point, was sick. Did you feel like you were in charge? <laughs> I was definitely in charge at that point. Yeah, okay. But earlier like, on, I'm like, dude, he even asked angle. me for permission. He was like, hey, man, can I tuck your hoodie inside like they give you this onesie suit Mm -hmm. i was like dude we're already in the plane you don't need to ask permission for anything from here on i've just i've signed up for a ride you tell me what to do and we're we're going yeah you just actually no i prefer if my hoodie was out (laughs) yeah so that dude just dude 3722 yeah we we only have to eight yeah we gotta fuck speed this thing up double time from here on out we're on 2.5 speed (laughs) 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it would be impossible for me to listen to it because I always listen at at least one and a half, if not double speed. Even our own episodes, I listen to ours on regular because es- I like to hear our voices, especially Someone ours. Was like, damn, that's my voice, eh? Weird. <laughs> I didn't even listen to Jim's until I like Jim's Friday. Me too. Jim's is awesome. I listened to it with Frank on the way home. And nice. Frank, Did Frank like it? Yeah, and we called him out for being a great skater, and he was hyped. Oh, really? Yeah, I forgot we did it. Oh, and I was like, that's nice. I love when that happens on the podcast because I'm always like, like I always like get psyched on people skating, and like you never say it to their face. Yeah, and they hear it on this. That's so nice, Frank. We love you, man. You're the yeah, best. Dude. <laughs> um, Scott Evan was tight though. Yeah, that sounds like neck. a good time, but your neck is fucked, and you and, and, and I then, skated Lee side. Then he fell fucking really hard at Lee side. <laughs> Whiplash. Kind of whipped like, his neck back, saved his head from hitting the ground from falling like 10 feet up, and then... So, I told myself I was going to take a week off. But it's too fucking damn nice out. It's been like four days, and I've already skated. I just bombed the hill down to the mm-hmm. grocery store, but Yukon's a great hill. And I I'm wasn't, going to Hastings tomorrow. I don't know about you. I Well, I can't. I know, but I want to. I get home at 6.30. It's dark at 6.30. Man, we should almost like <clears throat> ask if there's... If it's at all possible to get light to Hastings. That would be so fucking epic. You could. Yeah. For anyone listening to, it's pretty easy to get the attention of the government if you just get enough voices and say, hey, we want this. Mm. Like, they don't know that you want that, mm. you know? Like, they have no idea that Hastings needs lights. Yeah, that's true. They're just like, they're like, oh, they're content. They got a skate park. It's fucking... Yeah, and they have yeah. so much shit going on. Yeah, like, true. It's a P&E. Yeah. True. I just mean the government in general, like the parks board. Like they're not just worried about skateboarding is a small portion, you know. Mm-hmm. That's true. A small portion of the parks board. Parks board has so much shit to deal with. I remember going to that fucking Mount Pleasant meeting. That shit was fucked. Did you go to that? No. So many people, like three thousand skaters showed up, or whatever, a thousand skaters showed up, or something. And they didn't even get to the skate portion of the meeting. Barely, they barely touched on it. Like, yeah, because they were like they're so busy with priority, like priorities. They had like some fucking bullshit festival going on at, the que- at Queenie or something like that and they were talking about that and anyways they delayed it to the next meeting basically yeah so well I think you'd have to prioritize somewhat when you see like it's probably pretty apparent the people that are in that room yeah I mean are there any, to talk. anybody in the public can go yeah but meetings. I feel like they knew because think about someone well, they that, definitely knew that's why they delayed it that's why that's, they talk, yeah. no but that's their job you yeah. know like they go to those meetings all the time yeah I bet you most meetings don't get three thousand people. This yeah, was like true. a that rare, special, yeah. a rare occasion. Mm-hmm. They announced we're going to talk about the Mount Pleasant closure. Um, skaters, come show your support, mm-hmm. and they all showed up. You think they prioritized that? That's so true. Yeah. Well, they, that was like the reason why that meeting was even happening because they were like voting, just like that, if they were going to tear down Mount Pleasant, and it hadn't even been assessed by anybody. Like it was just like that one person on the parks board. I have zero clue who that is, so it doesn't matter what I say. But yeah, yeah, like that was, um, I guess hated Mount Pleasant for whatever reason, lived across from it or something like that. And I know, anyways, a de- I know the story more or less. I guess I should explain it for those yeah, listening. Explain yeah, it, there, yeah, that's so an Mount, interesting story. Mount Pleasant is Manitoba 16th. Right in the heart of Mount Pleasant community. Tiny little park. Right off Main Street. Beautiful. Vancouver. Really cool little place. And to get more context, when we designed it, we wanted to put in more trees because trees create shade. 
shade is great in summertime when you're a skater. And they said, no, it was going to re- reduce the visibility of kids in case someone gets hurt. So we were obviously obliged. Like, okay. So we built this park and then one girl complained about it. One woman, one woman, she's married, has children. She did not like the skate park, said it was too loud. And there's a lot of tattooed 20 somethings doing drugs. So that's you, Jordan. That is me. <laughs> <laughs> like, as as I'm, I'm reading 30 it, 30 now. I'm like, she's talking about me. Yeah, no shit. Um, Surrounded in tattoos. Yeah, everyone there. Mm-hmm. But pretty nice people, though, I don't think. Besides yeah, the weed. Come talk to us. Besides the weed, I don't think there was Fuck anything the really weed, going man. on. The weed's fucking a part of us now. It's legalized next week. Yeah, but I can see, like, whatever. Either way, she was upset. The only issue with her being upset is her husband hired the people that are on the parks board. Like, he's the parks board manager. I don't know his actual title, title, but he he's up there. So he's got a pretty strong voice, or pretty loud voice in that. He's heard, for sure, yeah. in that in that sense. And they kind of wanted to sweep it under the rug, like, oh, let's just do a vote, and they made it really quickly. I see. And uh, yeah, we that's actually, what we, yeah, yeah, right. like, oh, it's too loud. So that's what the grounds were, like, okay, this is too loud. Well, to counter that, well, let's try to mitigate the noise. Let's not tear it down immediately. That's not reasonable you know mm-hmm. we have That's to take a stupid idea That's take a lot measures of money to tear down a park too is it not i would assume so yeah well I would more it's more money than not tearing it down yeah it's more money than trying to figure out the sound problem. and making a new one down at jonathan rogers you know yeah. like yeah no which would have been sick because it would have been bigger but ro- been good. cool to have both mm-hmm. anyways it's true this girl's upset the city's like okay how about we try to reduce the noise so no more skaters at nighttime they still kept coming in over the fence so they put they put a big chain link fence up around it and they put like bungee cords across it at nine o'clock. There's a security guard that comes every single day. Even if the sun sets at 10 o'clock and it's the middle of summer, they're kicking you out at 9 p.m. They don't like you there. And they have no complaints about basketball across the street. No. And in Seattle, there was a study done that was actually paid for that shows that basketball dribbling is more piercing and louder than the sound of a skateboard popping. Yeah, and you can hear it down the road. Like I never thought about it until I read that study, and that was brought to the attention of them. And they just, oh, they honestly just like disregarded it. Like, well, no, I hear it. Skateboarding is louder. It's like, well, here's like science. Some super proof. Here's like, here's the decibels of each. And yeah. they're like, nope, um, it's still loud. So what they decided to do was put black mats around the chain link fence to reduce sound with no ceiling. Yeah. Pretty stupid. Now you can't. Now you can't see the kids, anyways. That we're gonna. We couldn't have a tree, but you can put a black, like a gym mat, like when you pad the walls. It's so dumb. It's like you can't see in or out of the skate park. Um, But it did create a moment that I will never forget. Uh, Some stranger don't have no idea, zero clue who this person person was. Stupid person. Yeah. Very, very, very rude (laughs) of him. But he accidentally locked us in the skate park yeah. with a bike lock. With a couple of bike locks, actually. And, and then the security guard came at nine, and he couldn't get in to he, lock us out. He couldn't. He literally could not get us out of the park. And we were like, we have zero. Dude, I'm, I'm worried. I have a dog at home. Yeah. It's past my bedtime. I need to get out of here. Can yeah. you please can you please open you up please the park? Open it up, but I'm going to keep skating until you do. <laughs> well, I'm not going to sit there and do nothing. Yeah, I mean, fuck, dude. That I'm, would be. I don't want to waste my time. Well, I also like think about the leg exercise that we're getting. I know exactly, right? So, health first. Anyways, that mystery person, real asshole, but <laughs> you know he uh, hooked us up with another forty-five to an hour, I think. Or and not only that, just the look on the security guard's face, like, oh, didn't think this was ever going to happen. Yeah, like, like, oh shit, I'm getting locked out of the skate park. I lock you guys out of the skate park. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is. My job. Yeah, we're just like, I don't know who did it, man. Fuck, I don't know. Something he asked like, me like yeah, four yeah, times, like, yeah, do you have the key? I'm like, like I don't. Uh, I literally don't have the key. He cut through it. In hindsight, I wish that mystery person that shall never be, be named. named. Um, I don't even know his name. That guy's such an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful eyes. and yeah. <laughs> No, Quite he should have not. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he should have used a stronger bike lock. Yeah. Because that dude cut he, through it with, with a, a pocket, pocket knife. knife. Yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. What the fuck kind of metal is that? Like, yeah. Was it no wonder or? your bikes get fucking stolen. Yeah. Or was it like a fabric bike lock? Like, what was it? No, that? it was like the chain one. So not, not a chain, but it's like it had a black rubber coating around a thin 
metal wire on the inside. Jesus Christ. And yeah, that thing. The guy sat in his car for like oh, 20 minutes. Right, right, right. Oh, it was like an aircraft cable inside it. Yeah, dude, those yeah. things you can cut with side cutters, man. You can just cut them like that. It's so funny. Yeah. No wonder people get in bikes stolen. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cheapest lock, though, probably. That's probably definitely why I did it. Yeah. Cheapest lock. Yeah. We could use, like, I'm not trying to give Some ideas, but someone could use, bars. like, a U bolt. <laughs> Although then you were responsible, like they could watch you take it off with your lock and pin you to the crime. Yeah, Whereas see, that's this the thing. stranger. You, you don't even have to bring the key. This stranger just he literally just rudely locked us in there and left. Yeah, so inconsiderate of him. I know, man. It sucked. I was like, all I had to skate for like an hour extra. It's insane. <laughs> His face though, and then when he went to the car, like I guarantee phone call with his boss, right? Oh, like, for sure. Uh, Guaranteed. so they locked themselves in. Yeah. Like, uh, well, like, get him out. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. I don't give any ideas <laughs> yeah. on how to do that. Yeah. This is your, your pocket This is your you? job. <laughs> this <laughs> is your job. You get them out of there. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That was tight. Yeah, it was tight, man. It was. That was a really great night, actually. It was. Oh, I love that guy, but I hate him. I don't even know time. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling the mushrooms at all? No, not yet. Mm. I'm slightly feeling them. Yeah. Pepperoni mushroom pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm slightly feeling the the margarita. I'm going to talk to you about, I guess you explained it outside to the stranger whose name we didn't get. Oh. But the lavender weed thing, like, I I get it, but I don't get it. Like, you're still putting combustion in your lungs. For sure. It's not about the combustion. You might as well. It's not the combustion. If you're going to hurt your lungs, you might as well get high. You know what I mean? Instead mm-hmm. of wasting it with like, why are you smoking lavender? Because I'm well, fucking addicted to not not cigarettes and not necessarily just weed, but smoking itself. Like I like smoking. Like I actually love having something to smoke. Not a cigarette specifically. I actually don't smoke cigarettes, but in the recent past, I have for some reason. Breakup might have something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, just like and been smoking spliffs and stuff. So, and um, anyways, me and. Me and Jack were thinking, hey, man, maybe we should smoke a tiny bit less weed. Let's put a little herbal, like, make herbal spliff. And we, like, bought lavender and damiana and rose and maybe eucalyptus. And, like, we just, like, make this little mixture and, like, grind it all up. And, like, just looks like weed with, like, like looks like weed, but, like, because there's lava or rose in it, there's, like, little almost, like, petals. Like, you know what I mean? Like, little, it, like, yeah. it's like, like a tea. Yeah, like, it's sick. You can actually drink it. We drink de- the Damiana as, as... As you should. Yeah. I think that you should do that instead of smoking it. I'm like, yeah. if you want your intake of lavender for the week, yeah. why smoke it? Well, no. But I, I get I, it. I get it yeah, after you yeah, explain it. Sorry, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, I... <clears throat> I fucking... And it tastes good with weed. It's like a herbal spliff. It like, cause like spliffs, like I don't smoke cigarettes that often. So it's like, I like have it. I'm like, whoa, fuck man. I'm fucking buzzed. And on top of being stoned, like I don't want to, I don't like tobacco that much, you know? Yeah. That's why blunts are popular. Yeah. You get a little bit of both. Yeah. I guess that's leaf. true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so it's a delicious little, it's delicious. It tastes amazing. And like, um, yeah, I don't know. You should try it out. Cameron, you um, shouldn't. I, I I have some. <laughs> I have some. We'll roll. We'll roll a. a, a oh, you think so? Do you? I already it? said no once. Well, what was I calling it? Eucalyptus journal. I was calling it something the other day. A lavender journal. I don't know what I was calling it. Something <laughs> had something to do. How with did you ever think of those names? It was like a eucalyptus joint, or a, <laughs> maybe it was a lavender joint. No, it was something else. Like I can't. Was it a rose it. joint? It was definitely a rose joint. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. I brought a book. I just yeah. started it. I actually bought it a long time ago. Explain the book, Cameron. Yeah, because we're at 7.35 already. But I bought this a while ago. I really like Tim Ferriss, but I don't necessarily consume his content, whether it's his podcast or his books or anything, very often. He also has a, a vlog on YouTube that I don't watch. But every time I do, I really enjoy it. And I bought this book, Tribe of Mentors. Didn't know what it was about. Started it yesterday. He had some questions that he was asking himself, almost in a depressive state, like, what's the purpose in my life? Um, I can actually open it up here. And essentially, he created 11 questions, both from his own pondering and his history with a podcast interviewing people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that stood out to me in this book, and just in like the uh, prelude, is it called a prelude? I don't know. The beginning of the book. Oh, we're going to call it a prelude. Yeah, maybe. He said that, when I have a problem or like a situation I need to face, I just ask myself, if this was easy, 
what would the solution look like? Try that solution. If it doesn't work, the hard one's still waiting around the corner. Like you still have to go through that time, but maybe you get lucky and it's not. Yeah. Maybe it's the easy one works. Out, yeah. yeah. So he said that I have these 11 questions and to get the answers to these questions, why don't I just ask all of the people that I look up to, whether they're athletes, whether they're businessmen, whether they're um, anything really like there's, it just goes from Tony Hawk to Gabber Mate to um, Kelly like Slater, Kelly Slater, Terry Crews, Whitney Cummings, like comedians. There's all so many different people, all sorts of fucking people. And he just sent out maybe 200, 300 emails with these 11 questions in here. And these are like questions that he found that really work. I've used them actually in the past on podcasts before. But I'm going to ask Jordan. I'm going to just right out of the book here. Question number one. It's going to be hard. What is the book or books you've given most as a gift? And why? The Alchemist, because you gave it to me. Yeah? Do you yeah. actually? Yeah? I would say so. Yeah. I always recommend that book. That book is sweet, man. That book's like an, a read you can read all the time. I know we talked about it in the podcast before, but, but I, I like that book. I find it changed my, my life. It motivated me. I find myself going back to it. A lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to read it. And it feels nice that you're just to know that the path might not make sense, but as long as you keep going, like it will get you there. And this yeah. book kind of takes you down that road of like looks like it's not gonna work, looks like it's not gonna work. Yeah. Not to give it away. It fucking works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> no, it's a great book. Yeah. Um I kind of knew that you were gonna ask that was your answer. Okay. That or inner game of tennis. I love that book too. Me too. I go back to that a lot. Yeah, me too. And this one we asked Sam, but what purchase of $100 or less has most positively impacted your life in the last six months or recent memory? And our listeners would love specific brands, models, where you found it, et cetera, just so it's accessible. It's a good fucking question. It's hard to think about. Um, in the last six months, what did I buy that was good for me? I just bought a car, but that's not like, yeah. I was thinking that I should have said a thousand because your car would have fit in, but it's what is a hundred bucks? A hundred bucks, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work for that price range. <laughs> um, fuck, what I buy that's like that was pretty good. It's been like one of those like buys where you're like, what have you bought buy? that wasn't weed, skateboarding, or food in a long time? Mm. Anything? Well, because we're both pretty like pretty minimal. frugal. Yeah, pretty we don't minimal, buy too yeah. many things. Like some clothes, but like I have this thing where like if I buy clothes, I gotta throw out clothes, like you know, like I or I gotta like give away clothes. Like I, I can't just like have a stack amount of clothes. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Your room's massive, though. I know it's huge. It's massive. He lives above a washer and dryer. It's great. <laughs> it's about a fucking, but like, about eight feet deep. <laughs> you can't maybe even, fucking like, you maybe like three feet. Up. Three feet. <coughs> three. My bed to the <coughs> ceiling is about three feet. It's a crawl space. <laughs> I have a fan. <laughs> I would, man, like, I could say, like, my, I bought a foam mattress for that thing, and that's probably a pretty damn good purchase. Bought at Army Navy, but I go. mean, that's not like, that's not my all time favorite purchase right now. I'm not saying all time, I'm saying the most recent memory or last six months. And, like, that could work for me. I got a truck, a foam mattress would fit nicely in the back of the truck. Yeah, that is you know true. I mean? like, yeah, might. yeah, it was a good foam mattress. Army Navy has camping foam mattresses, just so you know. And, I think it might have been like I mean I bought two of them, and like made a bed, and it was worth it. Like, cause we're not gonna stay there forever, so we're me and Jack and Martin are gonna move out. But I'll accept that as an yeah. answer. That's good, right? That's yeah. not bad. It's super functional. I sleep on it every night, so it's like yeah. I People, need it. Yeah, and that's it's relatable. In. Remember the one that Kaylin took from me after the breakup? You guys had the breakup. That little memory foam thing, it fit in my golf perfectly. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I would yeah. pay 100 bucks for that again. 100%, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and now, like, I got this foam. I can, like, I, yeah, I can go camping and have the foam if it's I want to, like, bring a, bring a piece of fucking foam around. <laughs> my <laughs> friend whatever. Yeah. used to work at the U of A, and I, I was actually with Dylan Felford and Nick Hale, and my friend texted me. He's like, hey, he cleans up the dorms in summertime. So all the students leave, and then they rent them out. It's like a temporary unit for the summertime. Mm -hmm. And then there's about maybe a two week window on either side of summer, like the start and end to clean up and like have the new tenants come in. But he gets to go through all the stuff that was left. Mm. And one day he just texted me. He's like, yo, this building, 12th floor, third door on the right. And I didn't tell Nick or Dylan what we were doing. 
I was like, okay, come with me. And we got in the building. We actually had to wait until someone like came out and we went in. <laughs> we went up and like, what the hell are we doing? Go to the 12th floor. I go in the door. There's a piece of paper on the latch of the door. So it looks closed, but it, you can push it open. And I went in there and I took a Nintendo Wii and that memory foam thing. And like, okay, let's go. And they're like, dude, did you just steal that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're so young at that. They were point, so yeah. young, and they—I oh ha- wouldn't God. tell them what I was doing either, which was just made it that much better. That's hilarious. But they were like—I guess I did steal like it. 15, 16. Yeah, sixteen probably. You were like nineteen, twenty. More than that. Twenty-one. Twenty. I, it can't be that much yeah, more. Yeah, I moved yeah. here at twenty-three. Yeah, twenty-one. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, I know it's fucked up. Not twenty-three. No, there's no 24. way. Twenty-four. Yeah, I, yeah. I moved here at twenty-four, and then yeah, you yeah, moved yeah. here right after. Yeah. Anyways, um. I guess it is stealing, but it wasn't because someone genuinely left it there and they weren't yeah. getting it back. And the university keeps it and they they sell it at a garage sale to make money on it. Oh, so so Cam's like, dude, just stealing. just and, take and it. And what? Fuck it. Who the hell gives? My dad a shit? thought it. My dad thought it was stealing. He was bummed. Really? A little bit. I think he just like the Get idea over of over it. Yeah. Get over it. Someone left it there. So many kids do so much worse shit. Yeah, there's like so if that's much the worst thing shit, that I get. Yeah, Jesus, I didn't Christ. even get caught. I just told him because he's like, why do you have two Nintendo Wii's? I'm like, well, one was free. Yeah. Yeah, but the memory foam was sick, so I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, third question, though. Okay. How has failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Do you have a favorite failure of yours? <clears throat> a favorite failure? No, I mean, like, failure is, like, I'm the type of person that does think that failure is, like, not a bad thing. You know, I've always been, like, if something doesn't work, it's, it, like, it's so, you can learn, you can grow, you can take what you like you can take it it might be shitty but it's okay like you know that kind of thing um but maybe a failure failure i mean one that comes to mind nothing like i got fired from new world that's a failure you know what i mean i yeah. took it i was like i was bummed at it at first but i like understand now and like honestly it's i got i mean they laid me off so they like they like it wasn't like i was like cut to the core like you're fired kind of thing they like, laid me off or whatever i got on the eye and what it went but I think that they, that they did that as like a nice thing kind of thing, but I would guess that you never always felt that way about failure. I think it's kind no, of no, yeah, to definitely you. no, definitely not. I just uh, yeah, definitely not always felt that way. I think it's kind of taught to you that failure is the opposite of success, when really it is a mandatory step on the yeah, road to success. Totally, man. There's no such thing as failure. Only yeah, steps towards. For success. what I, if I can comment on your favorite failure. I feel like you and Kalen ending years ago on White Ave. Yeah, actually, that's a good fucking call, man. That's actually probably my favorite failure because that's literally what that is led a failure. Me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, it is a you failure. That I mean, I time, wanted that relationship, time. and yeah, and but that being said, Wyatt is my favorite failure is because I would have never moved to Vancouver. Yeah. I would have never took the leap, like to do what I actually wanted to do and take that step in that direction, and. Yeah, there was so much good that came along with that breakup, like us going to Europe, um, losing my job at, at Windsor. Like, that's a failure, too. At Windsor Electric, that was like, like, I just quit to go to Europe, right? You right. got fired. You yeah, got death threatened. I got death threatened because I went to fucking <laughs> Europe, but I went on a fucking, I went on a whim. Like, I went the, Next that morning. Friday, I was running a job, and on Monday, we were leaving. Sunday and at noon. Sunday at noon, I yeah. was, like, calling him to ask if I could go, and he said no, and then I was like, fuck it, I'm going. And he's like, you're not coming back then, and threatened me with death. And, <laughs> and then, and then, um, so that was part of it, and then Kalen obviously breaking up with me and stuff. And whatever, though, man, like, that, that you're right. Like, I was obviously devastated at the time, but obviously hindsight 2020, but even at the time I knew I was going through like a revelation. Like I knew I was going to, I knew I was like, I was fucking shedding something and growing. I knew it at that time. I could feel it. And it was like moon of van was so exciting. And like, it was something that I wanted for like skateboarding and for all sorts of different reasons. And yeah, that's definitely probably my favorite for sure. That's definitely my favorite. Cause yeah. And I think now even like, I know it's touchy cause you just got out of a relationship but the people that I've seen you with after Kaylin, you're getting better at relationships. Thanks, man. Not that you were horrible <laughs> at it. I, I don't Thanks, mean that in man. a negative way. No, but no, I know. Like you, I pick, know. you pick the people that are right for you. Yeah, you're more a, picky. Yeah. You realize who's worth your time. Not and everybody's wor- worth my time. And, yeah, if you're, like, if I want to be with you, that, like, means that there's something I see that's special in you. That kind of thing. Like, yeah. yeah. 
But we got to keep going because we yeah. only that's keep only going. three and we got eleven and we're getting Fuck, that ten minute man. warning. Yeah, it's okay. Let's do it. Do if it. If you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, metaphorically speaking getting a message out to millions or billions, Shit. what would it say and why? Oh, fuck. I it got could, the best thing ever. Give me a few words or a paragraph. Okay, a few words. Uh, or a paragraph. Anything. Nothing. I got it right now. Yeah. Every session is progression. Oh, That's yeah. I've been saying that since I was a fucking child. Like, Well, well it's child 19, like, whatever, whenever I came up with that. You don't even know. I still have all my journals from We Live Together, yeah. like on my bookshelf in my living room. You still got journals from then? Oh, yeah. I got all Damn, of them. Damn, that's sick. That's why I do. I have... Like I literally, I I like wrote in notepads back then. So like I I fucking I didn't keep any of those notepads. I have my journals. Once I started getting leatherback journals, I kept all that shit. But but I have one. Um, every session is progression, and then progress to pro. And it was like literally just a book of foosball strategy. Like every piece of advice that someone told me, I wrote down just to get it on nice, paper and like figure dude. out what worked for me. I haven't, I've never reread it. I would say I every session is progression. And like I said that because I literally thought like as a, as a young man, I still think now, like I don't think you go skate and I, in my, in my mind, I don't go skate and have a bad session. I might ha- not be skating on point, but I still think by going skating, I'm progressing in, in some way, shape or form. I'm, I'm progressing. Like, even if it's like, Maybe not my top skate, but like I've thought that for a long time. It's still yeah. hours on your board. Yeah, but yeah still out. Yeah. For you, like I, I know that you love that because I actually have a journal named after that mm. from you. That's sick, dude. Oh, that's so sick. Um, okay, number five. What is one of the best or most worthwhile investments you've ever made? Could be money, time, energy, etc. Investments I have ever made for the best investment. One of the best investments I ever made was taking the fucking time to do the goddamn train trip. That was probably one of the best investments I could have invested yeah. my time into. Because like, A, obviously epic, spending time with my friends. They all made like the most amazing video that I'm gonna be able to look back on for until I'm fucking old and decrepit. Till you're dead. Yeah, and, and like it, it's just magical. That train trip continues to like change my life, man. I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like it's in, I mean, like, yeah, anyways. Anyways, it's crazy. Sick. That's the, yeah. probably the best investment. That's also out. Yeah. It's available. Vimeo yeah, yeah. on demand. By the way, you can go on video on demand and get Vimeo. Vimeo on demand? Did I say yeah. video on demand? What the fuck did I say? You said video on demand. Yeah, Vimeo on demand. I definitely said video for sure. Yeah. Um, Vimeo on it's demand. It's on our blog. And Yeah, it's on our blog. Should have Danish. Question six. He know they know. If I they know. listen to us, they we talk about it every episode. I know. As we should though. Mm-hmm. That fart yeah. sinks. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, reeks actually. <laughs> I'm gonna smell it in a second. Uh, what is an unusual habit or an absurd th- absurd thing you love? Unusual habit or absurd thing that I love. What's an absurd thing I love, man? This is you. You got to answer this. I know, but you know me better than I know myself sometimes. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Um, uh, I don't know. I love the fact that I don't know, like, the lyrics to songs. Like, I like that. Like, you just make them I up like as you I like that I, like, can make that up. Like, that's a weird kind of quirk. Yeah. Also, It's can, an unusual habit to just totally. sing along like, to yeah, every song. Yeah, and, like, I totally, like, make up my own like, song. No and some, Sometimes it works better than the actual song. Sometimes I'm like, well, in my mind, anyways. <laughs> Self props are the only props. Yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. Sick. Fuck your song. My song's better. <laughs> Number seven. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? Five years. So since you've been in a van, essentially. Oh man, eating at home. <laughs> Literally, for real. For real. Learning that, like, if you eat breakfast, if you only eat breakfast and lunch at home, or like bring your lunch, that saves the most insane amount of money like you can save money that way so easily i would have been debt free long before the train mm. trip if i didn't buy lunch every single day right yeah. i bought food every but it, not even just lunch day. we would you and me dinner? Bought, man we bought dinner we bought everything we bought food every day but now i'm like i'm so on point if i buy food i eat the fu- i just eat that food i don't even think about going out for food and like then when i do go for food it's like an amazing time because I'm like, oh, I want to experience this. this is it's good. better. It's yeah, and it tastes yeah. good. Yeah. I've kind of been going out for food more lately than I used to because I went years with like, I was so stringent. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. I'm getting rid of this debt. Like I'm working towards getting yeah. this done. And now that I finally like, I can't afford to go for dinner occasionally, 
I enjoy it way more than I used to. Yeah, and that like they do that just like taught me how to a like a kind of the value of my money because like now that I like can save, I'm like okay, well I and like nice. I hope they could hear that. <laughs> he farted again, um, but. I just think, and also like, yeah, just kind of taught me how to save my money. Like, you know what I mean? They like save like a decent chunk. Like, so, and that's how I do trap. That's how I go tr- on trips and prioritizing yeah, trips pri- over food. Yeah, exactly. Right. Sure. Like, yeah, this snack is good now, but like Mexico is in December. way cooler. <laughs> yeah. Mexico is in December kind of thing. And sometimes like, man, that fucking reeks. I told you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm just trying Savage. to shut you up a little bit. No. <laughs> You're asking me questions. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, he's got his hoodie over his mouth. That's why I said it. Mm, I like no, this. One. But what I was going to say with spending money on food, a lot of times I feel like shit after eating certain foods, especially in a rush. Whereas if I eat at home, like it's way better food for me. Yeah. And you always eat healthy. You man. sacrifice like 30 minutes to an hour of feeling like shit for like a minute of enjoyable food mm-hmm. it's great though sometimes mm, cheesecake so good oh, God. fucking fried chicken jesus christ <laughs> yeah. i don't even feel bad after you dude your hell I don't. no I don't. fuck no that's the shit's legit um what advice would you give to a smart driven college student about to enter the real world in quotations what advice should they ignore <laughs> Fuck, that's the fucking these questions are hard as shit they're great questions they're great questions for sure what number is this eight Thank God it's almost over. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, can you ask the question again? I'm, I got stoned. And what advice ready. would you give to a smart, driven college student about to enter the real world? And what advice should they ignore? Hmm. I would say whatever you're going to do, just understand that you're going to have to work hard and you're not going to be able to just get a job in the line of field that you want right off the bat. You actually just because your professor says that you will, that that means fuck all. There's people that have the experience that you don't have. You might have a degree, but sometimes you don't have that experience that you need, and that takes time, and the only time, the only, only way you can get that time and experience is if you do the fucking shit work and you put your goddamn head down and shut the fuck up. That's, that's like literally what I would tell them. I'd be like, just shut up and get to work. That's all I would say. Like. I wouldn't say it like that probably. I would probably be a little bit nicer about it. But, like, I would just say that, like, honestly, like, the world, like, just work hard. That's all I can say. And then what to ignore? Um, your professor that tells you that you can get a job right after you get out of high, right after you get off. Of, I don't even know if professors of sociology tell their students they're going to get a job immediately. I have no idea, but I all I know is so. arts teachers definitely probably tell their teacher or their, oh, really? their students. I don't know. I just know some arts students. No offense to any arts students, but where I'm like, dude, you can't just get a job in the field you like. You have to put the work in it. I know you went to school, but like sometimes that requires you doing shit work and. We all do shit work. Like, Look at everyone that you idolize in that field. I guarantee you they, they did, did some jobs fu- they for did some free. They free, shitty work. That's what they did. They and worked that, hard, yeah. Yeah, they worked hard. That's what I would say. And then, I would, yeah, I would say ignore your professor that tells you or whoever tells you that it's easy. It, like, it's totally not. Like, you're going to fucking sweat. You're going to bleed. It's going to be It's gonna be hard. Yep. I'll take it. Okay. Number nine. What are bad recommendations you hear in your profession or area of expertise? In my profession? Yeah. What would you say, sorry? What are bad? What are bad recommendations you hear in your profession or area of expertise? Hmm. What are bad recommendations I hear in my profession? I don't know. I got a pretty good project manager. He hooks me up with some pretty good advice. Think about in school or anything. Like yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Logical in general. Um... I don't know. What don't I like about my uh, about my career <laughs> that people bitch about or recommend? I don't know, man. That's a hard one for me. Can I skip that one for now? Go to the next one. All right. In the last five years, what have you become better at saying no to? Distractions, invitations, etc. What new realizations and or approaches helped? Any other tips? Okay. Um, last five years, I've got better at saying no to friends. Like, not because I don't want to hang out with you, but because I got my own shit to do sometimes. And and um, 
and yeah like it's not a mean thing but sometimes i just like sometimes i gotta do my thing and what was the second part of that question because i think it fit this my what new realizations and or approaches have helped what new realizations maybe the fact that like sometimes like i choose who i want to spend my time with carefully so like sometimes i don't always want to be distracted by by certain people right or whatever yeah. so like because my time is val valuable to me it's more valuable than money to me and and um yeah like yeah i know it's harsh and it's hard to say no to your friends because your friends are awesome but like if you truly have something you want to do and like it's not like obviously hang out with your friends be social like duh like you know like you need that time i think too but like saying no occasionally and doing your thing is definitely something that like is and i would say also um just realizing that maybe like that i'm actually like i value myself and my time you know maybe that realization like in the last couple of years has had us happened to help me like say no like i'm like oh shit well you know what i actually do want to do that like i want to do that you don't want to do that but i fucking do like that kind of thing you know so just realizing like how important i am to myself like not that i'm you know that important but you should be important to yourself yeah that's what i mean but like i think that that's the realization that i've had in the last like 10 years so like, many people treat themselves so much worse yeah than they treat anyone else yeah and like, like i i honestly like dude i'm not bragging but like i like myself like not like i not like narcissistically but like i like to hang with myself like i get i like sometimes just like to like sit in my car and like listen to music with myself is that it no, no, it? there's 11. Okay. There's one more. What? You, you want to keep elaborating on that? You were... I, I think I think okay. that that's... Okay, uh, okay, that's, okay. I think okay. I okay. Okay. center at that, yeah. When you feel overwhelmed or unfocused, what do you do? Is overwhelmed there, if, or if unfocused? Help, if helpful, oh. what questions do you ask yourself? Actually, usually when I feel overwhelmed and, un, and unfocused, I meditate. And like usually that meditation starts with me putting my legs up straight up against 90 degrees up against the wall and like laying with my back flat on the ground. And like, I just feel like the blood from rushing from my feet, like down back to my heart, my heart beating back up, like helps me like just focus on my breath. And I just like sit there for a bit and just kind of meditate on it. Like obviously sometimes you're at work and you can't, you're in the moment, you know what I mean? You can't just go put your legs up at 90 degrees against the wall, like at work with your work boots on when you're trying to, your boss is telling you to run some conduit or something <laughs> but no 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 but um but like yeah that's something that i definitely definitely do often when i'm like when i'm stressing out like i definitely like even today dude like i was like came at a sad moment today after work and yeah i just like i laid on the, i did that exact thing i just like and it just felt great it felt amazing just took a moment you know nice just let myself settle. <laughs> Good answer. That wraps it up. Well, I still have that other question to answer like as I skipped it. What are bad recommendations you hear in your profession or area of expertise? Or area of expertise. Yeah, one minute. I don't fucking know what my area of expertise is. I'm an electrician, but... Well, then your profession. It says or. So yeah. if you have a profession, then that qualifies. I'm a professional talker. <laughs> Don't talk over your friends. <laughs> <laughs> impossible. They don't fucking it's like impossible it. not to. Yeah. I've deemed I've done a lot of experiments with myself and it is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. But for like my work, like I honestly can't think of any bad advice that someone's given me at work that's like, maybe I shouldn't do that. Because like usually people are trying to like at work just get the job done. <laughs> Um, so that's fair. Yeah. But, um, and I have some really good people I work with, like Richard's great. Dave is great. Mickey's great. So it's like, and they're only trying to like get the job done with me. So I can't really, I, like as of in right now, I can't think of anything. So I, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. You know, what's great about these questions too. What? When you hear someone. So like for the book, for example, someone that might be on a pedestal. I don't know if our listeners have you on a pedestal for skateboarding or personality or anything. Uh, I don't think many of them I do. I think, think they're pretty yeah. even with everyone. You're fucking right. Yeah, but some people might. Regular people. You know, like I'm regular person. Like you, you know how you even said Magnus was on a pedestal when you were a kid. Yeah. You know, like totally. that's real. That yeah, happens. Totally. Yeah. 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 Definitely. But then when you hear people answer these questions, you realize everyone is the same, in the sense that everyone's fucking weird. Yeah. You know, everyone like is fucking the weird, people that are man. successful humans, found like, the little areas that they're good at. 
and they just double down, triple down, quadruple down on those areas yeah. and made those things work for them. That's sick. But they have so many flaws in other ways in that book. It kind of sheds light to people that That's you think so are... That's so sick, dude. Like, you, have you read that whole book? No, or, I just... Know, I literally just started it last I'd night. I'd love to read that book after you're done. Yeah, it's, oh, it's only... 700, like 700 pages. Yeah, let's it's see here. Really. Get oh, not that, even. Get that 600 week. pages. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. It's long for sure. Um, I would like to say... That would take me two years to read. You could also just pick the people that you want to read their answers to. That's Because the index just has a list of names. So if you want to just read Terry, Terry Crews and Whitney Cummings, there you go. Yeah, if you have your your people that you find in that book. I want to add... probably read the whole thing. I have quotes in my phone. I also have quotes all over my wall for anyone that's been in my house. I have tons of quotes. I love them. And when I don't have... If I'm not at home, I write them in my phone. And I found two hilarious ones in here that I don't know where they came from or when I put them in here. And one is, she's like a magnet. Attractive from the front. Or, sorry, attractive from the back, repulsive from the front. (laughs) (laughs) No idea where that came from. What the fuck? And then below that... A different one entirely. Just her eyes were like stars, not because they twinkle, but because they were so far apart. I was like, <laughs> oh, what, "What the fuck was I listening to?" Where I got that? Dude, and holy shit! I was trying not to laugh as I was reading that. That's early, really early. hilarious. Were you looking for a quote or something? Yeah, there was something that related to something you said. I wasn't in here, but I just thought that was hilarious. I don't know where that came from. Um, oh, before we wrap up, me. Coos, coos. before we wrap up, we should give a shout out to Silas. Happy thirtieth birthday, Dude, buddy! Dude, Silas, happy fucking thirtieth, man! I called you yesterday or today. Yesterday is your birthday, so I called you today. Um, I love you, dude. The GoFundMe page is out. The video is up on Facebook. I've mm. shared it on the blog. Yeah. For those that didn't hear episodes earlier, Silas had a work injury where he broke his leg severely. Yeah. Took about ten months to recover. Six days after getting the screws out, he ended up breaking the same leg again. Yeah. And he's in the middle of recovering that one. So mm, the GoFundMe rough is... Rough fucking go for Cy. For his osteopath, for his physiotherapy, yeah. his aqua therapy. Dude, how great of a girl is Emily? Hell, I don't even know her. Dude, she's amazing. Yeah, apparently. Shout out to Emily, too. Like, I don't know if you ever listen to this, but you're an absolutely amazing person. So, beautiful human. And, like... Oh, you take care if you of got, little side. If you got five yeah. bucks extra, ten bucks extra, Anything. it would go a long way. Silas Fuck is yeah. unable to work. Yeah. All of this therapy costs money. Yeah. His rent costs money. Everything costs money, man. And He's a good guy. He's a beautiful guy. He does so much for his friends, for his family. He's such a big, loving, gracious heart. Like, man, that guy's an um, absolutely inspiring human. And, like, man, his luck has been like fucking tough shit lately and like let's get him back on let's two get feet. him fucking back on two feet jordan ettinger you killed it on the video dude jetty man seriously so good so yeah love you si yeah get better if you got extra extra money and your wallet's just like a little heavier than it should be mm, yeah you got the fucking yeah. you got a couple extra bucks yeah. or what maybe you're carrying <laughs> a, maybe you're carrying like a hula hoop in there yeah or maybe a ten dollar bill got? what you got throw the ten dollar bill <laughs> 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 lose some weight in your pocket yeah, give true. him a hand yeah um, yeah, that'll be on our blog. Anything else? Um, for myself, well, what can I say? I'm in sweatpants tonight. It's a Thursday. I'm feeling kind of, feeling kind of comfortable. Sweatpants and sweater. <laughs> yeah. Did a little bit of mushrooms. Feeling them now. Wanting to skate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going skating. I'm chilling with Cam after this. Um... I have nothing to say to you guys right now <laughs> other than thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. Um, Cam appreciates it. Well, I'm don't speaking, put words I'm in my speaking mouth. speaking for Cam, but I'm assuming he appreciates it. And also, me. anybody that's reached out about the podcast, I want to thank you too because that's super sick um, that anybody's even listening. Truth be told, when we started this, I thought that our three friends were going to listen to it and that's about it. So... <laughs> It's sick that it's sick that people are listening and I wanna thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna let you go. Smoke eucalyptus, you'll like it. <laughs> How much do you pay for the cucumber? The English cuke. <laughs> How much you pay? One twenty five. I don't I don't eat cuke, I eat zucchinis. I buy a lot of zucchinis. Oh yeah. I get cukes are usually in zuc- the pickle form. I bought a fucking cuke and fucking sprouts from Save On Foods. And they were like, the cuke was overpriced. It was like three bucks or three fifty. And the sprouts are like sprouts, so you know, you paint an arm and leg for that already. And like they were bad. They both went bad the next day. Literally, like you know, when it gets like in the cucumber, where like the bottom of it's moist and mushy, and like the whole wrapping is like 
looks like cum in there. <laughs> looks like, you know? Yeah. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. That's what happened. And then the sprouts, I didn't even get to open the sprouts. I like, I like went to, like I opened them obviously, but then I went to go put them in my sandwich, pull them out and they're just like fucking wet and moldy on the bottom. And I was just like, save on foods. Honestly, this is the second time. 